with a strained right arch, and Kobe is questionable because of a storm. Right shoulder. Not so fast, Mark Chamora. Before you expect to sign with an NFL team, Commissioner Paul Tagliabue has told the league that the former Packer tight end acquitted on charges of sexual assault and child incitement is off limits until he has a hearing with Chamura. All right, I man, it's time now for you be the judge. Okay. Remember right. that? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I, I do. Well, yeah, I thought that used to excite you. you well, it does excite me. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> you be the judge. All right. All right. Let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> Philly first baseman Travis Lee hit 235, nine homers, 54 RBIs. He made a half a million last year. He asked for a million six. The Phillies offered 800,000. You be the judge. Million six. <laughs> Roll oh, nine, man. 800,000. Wow, Come big. on. Wow. 0 for 1. And finally. <laughs> that was exciting. Not, yeah, that, <laughs> that brought the house down, didn't it? <laughs> A sinning ovation. Regis Wolf. <laughs> All right. Tom Fitzgerald, San Francisco Chronicle, says former Marquette coach Al McGuire, who passed away last week, once said of his longtime TV broadcast partner, Billy Packer, I'll tell you the kind of guy Billy Packer is. A room lights up when he leaves. <laughs> well, I'm Mr. The Morning Sports. This is Warner Wolf. Program director Mark Chernoff. So these two guys are here this morning. Yes. They they at an auction. Yes. For the tomorrow's children's fund. Yes. They want an hour to sit and watch the. Oh, wait a second. To so come down and watch the program. Four. And, well, what an hour. hour. Yes, but now you're throwing people out of here. <laughs> I do not hear Put up now. thousands of dollars to sure. come down and uh, check out them, and yeah. he comes here like this. Time's up. That's it. <laughs> your, your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. They can stay as, as long as you like, like them to stay you there. Your oh, guests, really? and they can stay as well, long as you like them. Hours up. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, go. Time's up. Guess what? You. you. I'm out. gonna I'm gonna take them to the ranch, and they're gonna co-host from the ranch right, with me. Right. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Morning. This is WFA in New York and Infinity Broadcasting Station, part of ICOM. Time for the local news. And here with that is Charles McCord. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, I man. A fire overnight in Harlem killed one man, injured seven others, one in extremely critical condition. The late General George S. Patton, Jr. Don't give me that rag, man. Come on, hurry up. Patty, as you were. You may be wondering why I have chosen to address you today from inside the motor pool car wash, standing in the barrel of sheep dip and scrubbing my wrinkled old ass with the industrial equivalent of number five grit emery cloth dipped in battery acid. Yep. It is because, boys, I came face to face with the most heinous piece of putrid filth any power, foreign or domestic, has ever you seen. You saw Terry McAuliffe on Meet the Press too, sir? Men, we face a new and virulent adversary, an enemy whose obscene presence broke into the open full force during this past weekend. Not since I'm the, right. You did see Terry McAuliffe on Meet the Press. Not since the invasion of the body snatchers has this nation been confronted by a more imperiling threat. Something wicked this way comes, sir? It does. And this ain't no f***ing movie. You happen to see this thing also, Private? Terry McAuliffe, the new chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Good to see you were alert, Private. I... Well, I don't even know quite where to begin to illustrate for you people the menace this figure represents. But let me try. As you know, we have always measured sleazy, venal, unprincipled, mendacious, amoral, duplicitous, unethical, obnoxious, despicable, reprobate, lowlifes. Like the Clinton, sir? Exactly. Anyway, we've always measured them by means of what science called the what, Private? The Kaplan-Glanville skunk scale, sir. Right. A device that gauges an individual's potential for emitting a foul-smelling, oily liquid from glands located near the anus <laughs> every time they open their fat, depraved mouth, sir. Lads, because of recent events, that scale is now rendered obsolete. 
No longer can Rick Kaplan and Jerry Glanville serve as our standard models of fish gut dripping pretentious pomposity and cesspool level advocacy. Yep. The new standard brought to you by the Clinton White House is in fact Terry McAuliffe the newly elected chairman and robber baron of the Democratic National Committee. Yep. And why not, when you think about it? Manuel Noriega is in jail, Paul Pot and Ted Bundy are dead, and no one's been able to figure out how to domesticate the short-horned pygmy lizard. <laughs> we witnessed McAuliffe at his repulsive, venal best this past Sunday. A sticky-fingered, Clinton-ass-kissing snake oil salesman who would Ray Caruth his grandmother if he could sell the cadaver to a medical school. That is what revealed itself on Meet the Press. Do you people understand? Yes, sir. We do, sir. Then what did he look and sound like, boys? Let me hear you. Well, like a glib and quite deceptive expositor of values antithetical to commonly held American values, sir. Oh, I frankly... Felt... I said, what did he look and sound like, maggots? As previously stated, sir, McAuliffe not only defended raping the democratic process, but sounded scornful of anybody who dared differ with his vile methodologies when... Jesus, I said, Mr. Sapphire, how did the son of a bitch come off? Reply as though you had a pair of what McAuliffe's got bowling ball size. Sir, Terry McAuliffe sounds like some hell-made combination of Billy Saul Estes, Billy the Kid, Robert Fesco, Charles Keating, Mark Rich, Sidney Blumenthal, and Hannibal Lecter selling sideshow tickets for the fat lady who puts a boa constrictor where Bill Clinton stuck the stogie in his White House fellatio slot. Sir! <laughs> Not bad, Private. But it still doesn't quite catch it. Some things are beyond human possibility. And satisfactorily describing Terry McAuliffe's sleaze quotient is one of them. Let's include. As penthouse Bubba's ethics continue to falter and sag, how about this for his protege McAuliffe? Chairman Dirtbag. Thank you for your attention. For the moment, that is all. Oh, the wretched excesses, sir. Sad but true, Private. Uh, you want hot wax, sir? Come on, hurry up. You know, here's the problem with this Clinton Gore rift fueled blunt exchange of views story on the front page of the Washington Post right below the fold this morning. All right. Written by James Harris, uh, John Harris, and that is, it's like a National Enquirer deal. You know? What are you saying? Well, the headline is, is uh, sexy and compelling and provocative. Uh -huh. And then they spend, a, they spend you know, 1,500 words backing off of it. You know? Look, you sucky in, you mean? Well, I, not exactly that. Well, what's but... the deal here? Well, I mean, it, it appears that it wasn't a screaming match, <clears throat> which is what we want. Yeah. And uh, and it's just simply being reported by aides to both of these two clowns. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that the, the, the relationship began to deteriorate between Gore and Clinton when Clinton, of course, got involved, when, uh, when uh, it was revealed that he was having this disgraceful, disgusting Mel Reynolds-like affair with uh, Monica Lewinsky and then lied to Gore about it and us too, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, I still say, what was he supposed to do? I mean, if you're, you know, if you're going down that road, then you've got to lie. That's all. So, I, I, I never thought he should have been impeached or anything else. I mean, I just, I just, I mean, I'm, I, I, we, we have other people on the program who share an opposing view, primarily Charles and Bernard, who still want to put an ankle bracelet on this guy, by the way. Well, if you get caught lying, part of the deal is you pay the consequences. I understand that, but, you know, he, 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 was, he was essentially betraying his wife, first of all, his, you know, his family, and then us and the country and mm -hmm. the Oval Office, but... Trying to get out of a sexual lawsuit. Yeah, so, you, so the first thing you say is you're going to bleed me or you're lying eyes. <laughs> there you go. Is that so? I was, she died. I was giving her mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> she didn't feel well. I was taking her temperature with my meat thermometer. You say anything. You say anything. <laughs> if you're that kind of person, if you've already gone down that road, of course you're going to lie. If you're already willing to betray your family, then you're going to lie. Then, you, then you are, you're, you're predisposed to lie. You're lying then. So. Once they find a semen stained dress, however, then that makes it a little you're screwed. More, that makes it uncomfortable. Have uh, someone go in my office and get me a sheet of that uh, orange uh, Nicorette gum. Right now. Okay. Now, the Nicorette people have come out with... Uh, you say that I'm a so-and-so and blow your shot because a blow job's from my home. Well, I believe that I was screwed and that the one who really sucks is you. I blame you, babe. I blame you, 
babe. You should have double for your fate when you're the one who lost all four debates. But I guess I feel let down a bit by you, you lying low life piece of sh. And your twisted crooked bow. Well, I'm not the one whose campaign stunk and scammed those funds from their Buddhist monks. Well, sorry, but I don't feel bad about Florida and all those hanging chads. No controlling legal authority. I lost the race because of you. Yeah, well, I'm not the one who picked the Jew. You didn't want no help from me because I believe in decency. You really gotta get a life. Oh, I hate you and your fat pig wife. My fat pig wife. My fat pig wife. Get a good look at the load in the bed next to you lately. Tennessee, you fat loser. Why don't you steal some more silverware, you dirtbag? Oh, that hurts. You're really brutal. Next thing you know, you'll be pulling the W's off the typewriter. Hey, Hillary's on the phone. She wants to know if you still have Sharon Stone's number. Hey, your sister's on the phone. She wants to know where you put her cigarette. I gave to Vince Foster, you fat loser. Ah, oh, kiss my Arkansas ass. <laughs> <laughs> it gets funnier. Yeah, the more I hear it. Pretty good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Al Gore, Bill Clinton here on the Ivan's of the Morning program. Tucker Carlson from the Weekly Standard and CNN's The Spin Room yeah. is coming up. Mr. If Mike and the Mad Dog doesn't watch something, that's not going to mean you're not. All right, 8.58 and 25 seconds. It is the time of a Thursday night on the van. New York City, Steve Summers here. You there. Mr. LaGreca, Ms. Johnson, Mr. Saladin McLean on the other side of the glass. Richard near a 10 on the fan. New York! Sports Radio! Listening to Tucker Carlson and Bill O'Reilly, and I'm, let me say this in Tucker's defense: when we called him yesterday, he jumped at the opportunity to come on, as did Mr. O'Reilly. Yeah. So, if you like the book, I'm happy you like the book. Um, I was going to give you a list of people who have read it. <laughs> I have never read a book with that ends with movie recommendations. <laughs> well, everyone trashes on, you know, the media elites and Ben and Sally and all that. I mean, the really transgressive. Uh, you know, brave thing to do would be to defend the dreaded wealthiest 1%. Oh, yeah, just one, one second, Tucker. I'm looking up transgressive. Hold it. Oh, <laughs> good, good. Your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. Wait, I just got transgressive here, Imus. It's uh, a guy who wears women's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what did that have to do with my book? Imus in the morning. When you're listening to the Mets, Giants, Knicks, and Rangers, then your radio is locked into the fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York, an infinity broadcasting station. WFAN 2020 Sports. Good evening, it's 9 o'clock. I'm Bob Usler the with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. <laughs>
Well, good evening to you and how you be. 904, 50 seconds, Thursday night on the van, New York City. Steve Summers is here. Are you there? Dave LaGreca, Lisa Johnson, Saladin McLean, a cast of thousands on the other side of the glass. 718-937-6666. The number for a Thursday schmooze until Richard Near at 10 on the van, New York. And I'm always a very happy camper. On issues of the day, I'm a Washington senior political affairs analyst, the late Richard M. Nixon. Indeed, indeed. And thank you very much, as ever, I miss. In the morning! Oh, don't sing. Haven't uh, been able to join you here for a while. Quite a bit to catch up on. Don't have much time. Matters press, I do. So let me just jump right in to say how elated I am over the recent news from within the Beltway and add that I could have told you so because... Uh, well, I'll admit that President Bush is off to a pretty graceful start. He's no, 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 no. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where does it say program host sticks fat nose into the middle of savvy guests' comments? Well, That's not what I'm talking about. Oh. Junior somehow managing not to step on his pecker yet. No, no, I'm talking about Clinton and Gore grabbing each other by the peckers and blaming each other for blowing the election. If you'd uh, let me complete a thought, you a-hole. Anyway, I do. We now learn that Bill and Al have been sticking daggers at each other. Actually, I guess uh, Gore should be happy the fat bastard didn't stick a stogie up his fanny, based on Bubber's history in that area. <laughs> the central argument, Al says our favorite goober pervert killed him at the polls because he tried to yank the pants off of everything in the skirt for eight years. And Pat Lode says Gore wasted himself because he didn't run on the Clinton administration record. <laughs> what record? The Monica Lewinsky DNA report? <laughs> Of course, Gore distanced himself from that dripping dirt bag. And for two very good reasons. A, he didn't want to get a disease. And B, Megan's Law was in effect. Oh, uh, speaking of Megan's Law, Dono, how does that impact this $811,000 office space Bubber's stiffing us with? Before he moves in, does he have to register as a sex offender? Well, I mean, I just read that Mel Reynolds now has formal sex offender status with the Chicago PD for boffing the office help. So why not... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Moniker was about 24 hours beyond the age of consent. Uh, Congressman Reynolds' babe was 17. Never mind. Anyway, now Gore's line is that he and Bubber are okay. Just had a little squabble in the heat of the moment. It's behind them, and they're friends again. <laughs> sure. Let me tell you who are closer friends than Clinton and Gore. Sharon and Arafat. Who are they trying to sh uh, Oops, uh, did you beep that? Uh, who are they trying to uh, jive? <laughs> Sorry. I also see we have a winner in the World Sleaziest Man Contest, Dunno. Well, congratulations, and a tip of the old dick hat to Terry McAuliffe, new chairman of the Democratic National Committee. I never thought I'd have to do this, J.D., but uh, here you go. What is this? This is my official I'm Not a Crook medal, awarded to me in 1974 as I left office uh, one pubic hair ahead of impeachment after trying to subvert the Constitution and sabotage the Republic. Fine. Well, I now officially pass this treasured memento to Mr. McAuliffe, a man who makes John Ehrlichman, H.R. Halderman, and John Mitchell look like paragons of unmitigated ethical purity. <laughs> oh, good to see that the Democrats are finally serious about campaign finance reform, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what else, very briefly? Oh, yes, the Tucker Carlson, Bill O'Reilly spat. Tucker, he of the bow tie and perpetual wedgie, it appears, through implication characterizes O'Reilly as a scrotum-scratching, beer-swilling, sofa-farting trailer cracker in that gratuitous dig in Newsweek magazine. And then, when O'Reilly confronts him on your show, Carlson folds up to the point he looks like origami, for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, I really like O'Reilly. I, I read his book last night. It's not bad. Jesus, pathetic, I man. What's that CNN show he's on? The uh, Flinch Room? Ouch! <laughs> Weak need shrinking invertebrates in the old Dickscope today, J.D. Sad to say. Identified by Dick Nixon, former president of the United States. 18 till the hour here on the I'm a Morning Program. Al Gore now and uh, Bill Clinton. You say that I'm a so-and-so and blow your shot because a blow jobs from my home. I believe that I was screwed and that the one who really sucks is you. Babe. I blame you, babe. I blame you, babe. You say I'm liable for your fate when you're the one who lost all four debates. But I guess I'll feel let down a bit by you, you lying, low-life piece of Babe, I blame you, babe. I blame you, babe. I blame flowers and all the 
program. Bernard's going over to uh, the uh, Carnegie Hall where uh, the Carnegie office tower is. Bill Clinton's proposed office is going to be. Yep. And we're going to be conducting uh, some interviews there, Bernard will be, and also Glamoraid, an effort to raise some, collect some items that will help Hillary Clinton. It's very gracious of you, I met. Get uh, the wig hat back on her head and them high heel sneakers. Understood. Now, last night on Survivor, Ann Rainwater of uh, Spencer, West Virginia, was matched up with Marilyn Mad Dog Hershey. Yep. And uh, Marilyn Hershey got voted off the uh, outback, out of the outback. So Ann won. Here she is now. Good morning, Ann. Good morning. Were you watching that thing? No. I'm like you. I have trouble. Uh, good morning, Warner. Good morning. I'm Ann. The Simus in the Morning Sports Report is brought to you by Smith Barney. Break up the nets. NBA, the Nets made it three in a row, break San Antonio's eight-game winning streak, beating the Spurs 99-97. Stephon Marbury at 38. Hornets over the Hawks by 17. Rockets beat the Pistons by 13. Toronto 99, Denver 92-31, Vince Carter. Rick Pitino will meet with UNLV today about taking over the running Rebels job. And Bobby Knight will be paid $50,000 from a Virginia Internet company to make his picks for the NCAA tournament. If you don't agree with Knight's picks, he gets to punch you out. So it's there, you? Bulls coach Tim Floyd was fined and suspended one game for bumping in the referee Greg Willard in Monday night's game against the Clippers. Said Floyd, at least that's one less Bulls game I have to watch. <laughs> All right, I'm in. It's time now for You Be the Judge. All right. Here we go. All right. Kansas that. City catcher Greg Zahn. Yeah. Hit 274. All right, wait a minute. 274. 274. Okay. Seven homers. All right. 33 RBIs. All right. Last year, he made 665,000. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. 
the Royals offered Zahn $850,000. Right, all right. Increase of a uh, slight yeah, I can figure okay. that out. Well, we got Zahn you. asked for almost double. <laughs> yeah. A million one hundred twenty-five thousand. Right. Good. The arbitrator ruled in favor of a million one. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. He's right. got it. Yeah. He's got it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Pretty generous, though. I mean, that guy had two seventy-four. Right. Yeah, but sure. Sure. At two seventy-four, thirty-three <laughs> RBIs, <laughs> seven home runs. Big deal, huh? He's getting it done. Oh, He's yeah. getting it. He's getting it done. That's not. Give that's chump money. change, a million one. Give him the money. <laughs> Show me the Benjamins. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's nothing. Give it to the ranch. That's unbelievable. All right. All right. All right. Well, all is not well, so the I-Man is now one and one on You Be the Judge. Well, I could have been two and two, by the way. Yeah. But we'll he talked to you earlier. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, just, okay. we, didn't had, had, we didn't, hadn't had a chance to get together. But, That's uh, it. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> well, I like these. I'm, I like Good. these. I want one every hour. Well, you got it. You I got love, it. I love these. But I, that means I have to get on every hour. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you on. Don't worry about a thing. Here. All right. We had plenty of time. All is not well in Minnesota Viking land. Vikings offensive tackle Todd Stusey says all pro wide receiver Randy Moss does not go out on every down, and Moss feels that a couple of big plays can make up for his lack of effort. Oh, man. Wow. Stusey says Moss's mentality is a departure from the definition of the entire Viking team. Says Moss, stuff it, Stusey. <laughs> <laughs> And say it isn't so, I'm in. Right. It'll be Allie and Frazier. But it's Layla Alley and Jackie Frazier yeah. in Verona, New York on Father's Day. Hmm. Come on. You can't have your daughters fighting on Father's Day. <laughs> For Imus in the Morning Sports, this is Warner Wolf. Imus in the Morning. Did you see that TV commercial where Grand Hill, the big basketball... Hard as they can. Nice to have you with us on Friday here in New York, 9th day of February of the year 2001, 718-937-6666. Do some NBA today, of course. The Mike and the Mad Dog Radio program, the 630. Jerry Recto and Chris calling across the way as we talk about the world of sports. Good afternoon now, Michael. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, well, we'll get right to it because you and I have a little disagreement on it. Uh, fine, but you've got to take it easy on them. No, no, no. No, no. Not an awful thing showing your crummy clothes on... Uh, MSNBC. Yeah, so. That's a, all right, we will be happy to do it. Fine, and so. we will do it. All okay. Right. 16 right, till they are. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. We don't need no water. Let the mother burn. Burn, mother burn. <laughs> You've been thinking about uh, <clears throat> taking a uh, Bernard McGurk, Monterey, Ivy, and Stefan Drucker over in front of Carnegie Hall in Midtown Manhattan. Let's go there now. Good morning, Mr. B uh, McGurk. Good morning, Mr. I, Miss Well. Good morning, America, and the Today Show both broadcast live births on their programs this week. And we can safely say after this morning's remote, we broadcast an abortion. But we are here outside of uh, the Carnegie Towers where Bill Clinton will be renting office space. We've been holding a glamorate for Hillary Clinton. We've gotten fitness magazines, cigars, dog food, hockey masks. Liquor. And out, liquor, and we're out here and so, uh, interviewing some of the tenants of uh, this building here. Some people say that uh, Bill Clinton's uh, coming here will ruin the neighborhood. Yeah, I told you he was the first black president. Yeah, there you go, there you go. And here's one uh, woman who works here. Her name is Cherish. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. How do you feel about Bill Clinton coming to this building where you work? Oh, I'm so excited. If he can't be president, at least he can be my neighbor. Now, I noticed that you're wearing braces. Did you get those as uh, sort of a defense mechanism against Bill Clinton's presence here? No, I thought he liked younger women. You thought he liked younger women? Now, you were telling us that there is a jo there are jokes going through the building about uh, Bill Clinton being here about... Tell us. Tell, tell, tell us. Oh, well, we're just all looking for our blue gas dresses because we thought we would welcome him the way he likes it. <laughs> so there is, a, there is a buzz, and a lot of the girls are going to line up. There's going to be a conga line of sluts heading into his office, don't you think? Absolutely. And you're into it. You're all for it. Why not? It's one of those New York stories. She can't wait for the Christmas party. He knows Bill's going to get great Christmas parties. 
So you're going to take those braces? Are they removable when you go into the office? I can't tell you that. All right, well, there you go. So there is a buzz going on here, and uh, we have a couple of the other young ladies. One, You ladies work in the building here, right? Yes. And, and uh, she tell us there's some uh, sex jokes going around among the young ladies in the building. Is this correct? <laughs> yes, it is very correct. And what kind of sex jokes? Give us a little. Come on. Uh, people are just kind of not really... I mean, nobody knows. Nobody knows at this point. Everybody's just kind of up in the air with everything with the jokes. I, don't, I can't say it on TV. <laughs> are you girls excited about uh, Mr. Clinton coming to this building? Or, com or coming in this building? It should be exciting to see what, I mean, what's going to happen, how everybody's going to react, how this security is probably going to be beefed up. If yeah. he called you up into his office and took it out and asked you to kiss him, no, would you do that? No, no. God, no. no, no. no. Okay, well, listen. Hey, we, we all know here. We're all here with uh, this gentleman. We got okay. celebrities here, too. Though, we got Burgess Meredith here helping us out this morning. Actually, this man is a, a, a fashion designer. Is that correct? Yes, I'm Jacques Fontaine. Do you know Joseph Abood? Uh, I think I've, I've, I know him, yes. Have you ever slept with him? <laughs> well, no, no, no. Okay, well, Jacques, we also have uh, my man here. What's up, yo? Hey, uh, <laughs> listen, I'm all for it. Just as long as the president remember to include this price of this bill in his tax cut, it would be fine with me. Because if not, he's going to come up a little short. That's what I'm saying. Now, how, why, why couldn't Bill Clinton, he's a man of the people, first black president, why could he not take a, an, a, an office building up on 125th Street and try to revitalize that hood? That's what I'm saying. Well, Magic got that covered, baby. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, Magic got the theater up there. We don't really need him up there. I mean, as long as he's here and the president include that in his tax cut, I'm fine with it. You think you think uh, he should get back the, the furniture they stole from the White House? No. Because we, the Republicans I'm stole the election, so he's stealing stuff from the White House. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that if he got it, he should keep it and pardon himself. He should pardon it because he's the first black president. He pardoned president. himself. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he That's the black lot. concept. Hey, pardon listen, your damn self. Listen, you, the only people you pardon are people that are guilty. You know what I'm saying? Little, there ain't no reason to pardon anyone else. <laughs> Yo, check this out, man. Should they put Ray Davis on the uh, Wheaties uh, cereal box or what? No. Why not? Let's stick with Tiger. You know another serial killer there? No, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis. Yeah. I think we should. Oh, Ray Lewis. I'm all right. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. I'm cool with that. <laughs> now we're getting signs. Don't forget go. about Puffy. Gotta, Are you ready for a black? Puffy, Are you ready though? for a black governor here in New York State? Or <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready for a black governor in every state. So you're upset that Andrew Cuomo actually wants to run for governor and preempt a black man from getting a job running the state? No, I think the best man should win. Oh really? <laughs> and the best man is Carl McCall. What can I tell you? I like that. An, an open-minded black man. My brother from another mother. You down with the East Coast or the West Coast rappers? We all won, brother. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a step on the wagon. I'm trying to have to sit my burger. I'm a sin no more. 2020 sports. And there, right there, it's Warner Wolf. Good morning, Warner. Good morning, Iron Man. Well, after just one game, Vince McMahon has changed announcers in the XFL's number one game. In the play-by-play, -play, the main guy... Matt Vassergian has been replaced by WWF announcer Jim Ross, who McMahon says was louder and looter than Van Gersian in the play-by-play. -play. All right, Davis Cup is underway in Basel, Switzerland. First match, U.S. Switzerland. It's 19-year-old Roger Federer taking the first two sets from Todd Martin, 6-4, 7-6. That's right. First two sets. All right, I'm in. You be the judge. Oh, I love this. It's time for you be the judge. Oh, man, I love this. Tiger right-hander Chris Holt, 8 and 16 last year. Yeah. With a 5.35 ERA. Yeah. He earned a million one hundred twenty-five thousand. Right. He asked for two million three. No. The Tigers offered one million eight hundred fifty thousand. Right. The answer is. Or well, shouldn't have gotten either, but he got one eight. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The <laughs> Iron Man has it. All right, Iron Man. Finally, if you were former President Clinton and Mrs. Clinton and thought you could get away with keeping the White House gifts, you, you lost. lost. Yeah. For I miss the morning sports, this is Warner Wolf. Yeah, they were dancing and singing and moving to the moving. And just when it hit me, somebody turned around and shouted, I miss in the morning. Whether you prefer your new cost of ID required for application.
the 50,000-watt clear channel voice of Imus in the morning and Mike and the Mad Dog in the afternoon is The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York. An infinity broadcasting station. WFAN 2020 Sports. Good morning at 10 o'clock. This is Rich Ackerman. Robinson on fight in the lane. His shot up. here in the fan. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, the 9th of February. He is Jody McDonald. She would be my partner sitting to my right, Susan Waldman. How are you this morning, I'm, Susan? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? That's uh, okay. okay. I can... All I'll tell you is yeah. move to and fro your car to and fro your car quickly this afternoon after the show and when you get in the house. And then stay in the house for like a couple of days. Why is that? Because you got a vacay coming up next right. week, right? <laughs> yeah. It is supposed... Bill Clinton's office building, the Carnegie Tower, there in Midtown Manhattan, coming up. I dream that every person with a life-threatening disease will look to Medtronic for the products that... 17 after the hour. So I told you yesterday about the ranch employee, the Imus Ranch, working cattle ranch for kids with cancer out in Ribera, New Mexico, who had uh, put a set of tires for her car on a ranch credit card. Yes. And also, now we discovered $200 worth of other work for her car. Really? <laughs> so John oh, Silver, who's the ranch lawyer, oh, no. calls her and says... Uh, Get a check in here for this amount. Yeah. So now <laughs> she sent a check, and Fred said she was in Houston, I guess. So mm -hmm. Fre Fred said, I guarantee the check won't be any good. Yeah. I said, nobody sends a, in a situation like this, when they get caught stealing. You don't send a bad check. You don't send a bad check. No, you can't. Well, she didn't. <laughs> did, did, did. Oh, absolutely. Did, did. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> check, check, bounce higher than your kid. Pat, Patrick Ewing. Oh, absolutely. Just abs <laughs> a hot, absolutely hot check. This is unbelievable. This is an absolute fat crook. A hot check. Whose life will never be the same. A hot check to cover stuff that, that she, she stole on your card. All right, let's go to Bernard McGurk oh now, who's God. live in Manhattan in front of uh, the... Uh, where are you, Bernie? I'm live in front of uh, the Carnegie Towers here on West 57th Street between 6th Avenue and 7th Avenue. Now, this is the building where Bill Clinton plans to have his ultra-expensive office space up on the, uh, I believe it's the 57th floor, the 56th floor. Why he didn't choose the 69th floor, we don't know. But as you can see, I'm going to interview this young lady in a moment. We already see uh, Secret Service people outside the building. My man, you with the Secret Service, yo? Are you with the Secret Service? Okay, well, and then over here we have, uh, it's next door to the Russian Tea Room. And there's a lot of hotels in the area. We'll get to that uh, shortly. But in the meantime, we have... Uh, and by the way, we're doing glamour aid for Hillary Clinton here. We know she looks a little rough. And we need people to help out. They don't like to spend their own money on stuff. So we're, we're conducting glamour aid, as you can see. And we'll be soliciting uh, blow dryers, uh, hockey masks, whatever you can think of. Now, here is a young lady who works in the building. And I want to ask you, what's your name, first of all? Sarah Smith. Sarah Smith. Now, Sarah, do you think that... Uh, uh, the people here in, in this neighborhood will welcome Bill to Manhattan Island or vote him off the island? I think they'll welcome him. New York's very liberal, so I think um, he'll be welcome. I look forward to meeting him. Do you think taxpayers should have to pay for the ultra-expensive office space that he's renting upstairs? I don't necessarily think he needs a whole floor. However, I do think with private uh, contributions and maybe half the taxpayers' money and maybe half of a floor, maybe under $350,000, that would be a little bit more reasonable considering he'll probably be here only 50% of the time. And considering he's an impeached president and all, and was disbarred when he left office. Now, I know if Bill Clinton's watching, I know what you're thinking. I hit the lotto. I know what you're thinking, but <laughs> keep your hands off. Now, would you, now, what floor do you work on? The 38th. Would you ever uh, work for Bill Clinton upstairs in the, uh, in the uh, 57th floor, whatever it is? I'm very happy where I am right now. <laughs> it would be a little bit like being Mark Chamura's babysitter if you worked up there, am I right? <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> no, do you think now, uh, not, you know, now on a serious note, you have, he's, uh, he's an alleged rapist and, a, you know, a documented uh, pervert, to say the least. Do you think he should register with the police here as a sex offender? I don't believe so. You don't think so? No. Now, do you think they should have given back the furniture that they stole from the White House, I guess, is, is another question I have. Yes, I do. I think that was completely wrong, yes. You think that was wrong, right? You th so they're thieves? 
<laughs> Basically. It could have been a mistake. <laughs> now, why do you think he has to have a, a, a view, a, a penthouse overlooking Central Park? Do you think he needs to, a window over the park so he can actually watch his friends commit suicide or what? <laughs> oh, he is a former president. I think he demands a little bit of respect. So I, I, I'm all for him moving into this building and looking over Central Park. So now, how about, uh, now what if I asked you, what, what what's the difference between, now with all due respect, what's the difference between a uh, lesbian and a catfish? If I asked you that question, and then I said to you, the difference is that one has whiskers and swims at the bottom of a lake, and the other, uh, no, one has whiskers and smells like a fish, and the other swims at the bottom oh, of a lake. Oh, well, now well, listen, well, now well, let well, me ask you, I know I blew, I blew it, but now would you be offended by that? Yes. Now Bill Clinton was over here telling lesbian jokes like that the other night, and gay jokes. Where's the outrage on that? If that's true, which I didn't hear, then I think it's terrible. So now you really... We're going to get back to Bernie here in a little minute. It's 21 FAR. Here. Just because I ask a friend about her. Promise tax breaks. You can invest right now in an IRA. They're one of the best deals Uncle Sam has ever given. That's a safer retirement. Buyandhold.com, the online broker for. Sears Corporation by Sears National Bank. Positive ID required for application. All right, here now, Media Watch. Today, pricking the swollen egos of two of our nation's media elite with our chief prick wielder. Walter Cronkite. Chief prick wielder indeed. Stabbing today at the outsized egos of a couple of our cable denizens, one a resident of MSNBC, the other still managing to duck all the lead flying at CNN. Who are they? Well, let's take a look. Both are bent double over the media watch gurney of inquiry. Pants at familiar Clinton blow me level, flabby, sallow, lard asses yawning wide, awaiting this old correspondent's surgically gloved digit of doom. Why do we probe this pair? frankly, in hopes of letting some of the hot air out of the bastards. On this side, with the particularly tight ass, we find Tucker Carlson, the mop-headed, bow-tie-wearing twit from CNN's irrevocably pointless program, The Spin Room. And here, Chris Matthews, the host of MSNBC's Hardball, with the perpetual hard-on. Not that that is, in and of itself, a bad thing. Think 42nd president. In the context of Mr. Matthews, however, hard-on does not refer to a physical manifestation, but rather attitudinal. Not that that's all bad. Only thing is, when one decides it's time to exhibit attitude, choose your shots very carefully. And if the target you're aiming at is James Carville, the crazed but crafty Clinton apologist, A, you're a fool, and B, get ready to dive for a foxhole. Here's Matthews inquiring as to why James continues to question Florida's election result. No, when no, are you going to stop no, saying no, Florida? No, no. You can, when are you gonna it's stop? not your election to stop arguing about that. No, you, how are you going to go with this? When are you going to let me answer your question? Okay, question are you going to let me answer the question? Let me tell you what the question is. Yeah. James, the question is, how long are you people going to rap about Florida? You know, you know what? We're going to find out the truth. You don't want the truth. No, no I'll 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 it. Put, Would you please let me answer the question? Okay. Okay, because if you interrupt me again, I'm just going to stop talking. Did I tell you what to ask you what questions to ask me? No, I just then, then, don't, then don't ask me no, on you your show. Stop talking about Florida. Don't, don't, don't ask me on your show and tell me how to answer the question. Right. And I, you know what? I'm not going to stop talking about it because I know he won Florida. You know he won Florida. And, and the Democrats know he won Florida. And James Carville is going to keep fighting for you. And we're going to find out the truth in Florida. And we're going to find out that Al Gore won by a lot. So, no, I'm not going to stop talking about right. it, ever. Not pretty. Is that cadaver Chris Matthews or Sonny at the toll booth? It'll take dental records to figure it out. Lesson for Mr. Matthews and others of the gas bag set, you don't bulldoze the raging Cajun. And if you try, as somebody once inelegantly stated it, you are uh, copulating with your heartbeat. Hasn't happened to spin rooms Tucker Carlson yet, although I suspect when Bill O'Reilly, host of Fox News' The O'Reilly Factor, is through replying to Mr. Carlson's observations about him, we'll be measuring Tucker for a body bag. Mr. Carlson, who you know, along with the bow tie, has thong underwear beneath his Brooks Brothers outerwear, sniffs imperiously to Newsweek magazine that he doesn't personally know anyone who's read Bill O'Reilly's eponymous best-selling book. 
unstated, of course, that anyone who'd actually buy something penned by Bill O'Reilly would shag sheep and use any reading material principally to level a double wide. My question, the Clintons seem to have taken every other piece of worthless clutter inside the beltway. Why couldn't they also have carted off this schmuck? I would note that at one million copies gone, somebody's buying Bill's book. Enough that O'Reilly got a corner blurb on the cover of Newsweek. I guess your corner blurb on the cover of one of the nation's major Newsweeklies, Tucker, is still a few weeks off. Sad, you pretentious f***. Now, this isn't the bestseller yet, but it's a work I've just completed, Tucker, that you might be interested in. It's a medical how-to book. First aid for when one has one's head up one's butt. I'll uh, overnight it to you. For Media Watch, this is Walter Cronkite. Thank you and good night. The national news here on the Irish Morning Program is sponsored by the Hackensack University Medical Center. Bernard's out in front of the uh, uh, Carnegie Office building. They're at Carnegie Buddy. Uh, Carnegie Office building there at Carnegie Hall next to the Russian Tea Room with Monteria and Stefan. And could we have a few less lesbian fish jokes, <laughs> do you think? I mean, that, that makes well, you know better than Bill Clinton and Bob Carey. Well, I'm just trying to uh, illustrate the You hypocrisy. don't need to illustrate. Where is the outrage when Bill Clinton tells lesbian jokes and I tell lesbian jokes and I get stomped on with, my, with two feet by the eye man and everybody else? Well, the, uh, but the, the lesbian jokes are over. They're Speaking not with, funny. Speaking of which, we are uh, conducting a glamourade outside uh, w this West 57th Street Carnegie Tower office building for Hillary Clinton. She's been looking a little frumpy and dumpy lately, as you've seen in the newspapers. Yeah. And they obviously don't want to spend their own money on things, so we're soliciting donations from people. Stuff like blow dryers, moisturizing cream, paper bags, hockey masks, anything you get your hands on. We have a bucket over here. Apparently, people are not in a charitable mood this morning because we, we only have a pair of rubber gloves and some... Uh, some glass cleanup for, uh, I guess, to remove the fingerprints. But in any case, we are out in front of the building here, and one of, this gentleman here happens to be a tenant of the building. He actually works here, I should say, and he lives in Chappaqua. What's your name? David Hauptman. David, do you think the taxpayer should have to pay for uh, this 56-floor uh, penthouse suite? Well, you need a quality office space, and I think the president is deserving of something like this. I mean, we get white glove treatment here, massages once a week. That type of thing. All right, let me ask, is there a Catholic girls high school anywhere in the neighborhood? I mean, why would he come here? You know, not that I know of, but there's a lot of interns that work in the building. Okay, and now we're also here with, uh, St oh, are you going to ride in with uh, Bill from Chappaqua, by the way? Well, that's the thing. He wanted me to drive every day, and I'm not going to drive every day, so I just said to him I'm going to continue to take the train. All right, you don't need that. Clearly uh, a Republican. Now, we have uh, Stefan and Monty here uh, in our uh, Glamour Age uh, segment, and uh, they have a couple of things to say about... Uh, about Hillary's looks and what we can do here this morning. Hey, good morning, hey, I man. Good morning, Hi, guys. How are you doing? We're feeling hey, good. Charles. Happy Black History Month. Yeah, BH month to you, I man. We you. know the time of the year when you give thanks to the black servants, I mean, black people who work for you all year. <laughs> like us. So we're here this morning because Miss Hillary received 97% of the black vote. Yes, Yet black voters are upset, I man, that she can't get her due together. That's right. So last night, Ivy and Dweck took an informal poll. At the shark bar. Between tequila shots. And trying to get some. And we came up with a list of suggestions for Hillary, courtesy of black women. Because as you know, I man, the number one black political commandment is, if your due is busted, you can't be trusted. <laughs> so here are a few beauty tips for Miss Hillary. First off, girl, you need to get back to your black roots. That's right. Which means that you're going to need an authentic curling iron. Dipped in hair grease and cooking lard. Now, remember, Miss Hillary, you're a working girl, which means you're on the go. So you're also going to need a mini curling iron. The Al Sharpton model. For those days when your committee <laughs> meetings run long and you know Wolf Blitzer is waiting for an interview. That's right. Now, of course, Hillary, you have to learn how to dress for every audience. We suggest the Snoop Doggy Dog do rag. That's right. Here it is for those congressional black caucus meetings. And a pink bonnet. <laughs> That's right. Formerly worn by Barney Frank. Now this comes in handy for those meetings with Catholic priests. And if your ads are just too lazy to do it yourself, then just take a needle and thread. Right. Pull out the prop. Okay. Just take a needle and thread. And get your weave together. Because you know what they say, if you can't grow it, sew it. And if you can't achieve it, weave it. And remember, Hillary, you're a New Yorker now, so if all else fails, you can always get the Latrell's Freewell chokehold cornrows. It may not make you a better senator, but it will get you VIP seats at the DMX concert. So take our advice and stop looking like Bella Abzug on crack. <laughs> Bernard. And, uh, Stephon, Bonnie and Stephon, Stephon, thank you. <laughs> Back to Strom Thurmond in the studio. i got to conduct a uh, personal interview over here. <laughs> you are just a nitwit. <laughs> Bernard, Stephon, I'm Ontario in front of Carnegie Hall. 
the Midtown Manhattan, if you have uh, beauty aids for uh, Hillary Clinton, which is, this could be one of the lamer things we've ever done, <laughs> why you drop them off, 13 after the hour. Oh, good God. Looking out on the morning rain I used to feel so uninspired And when I knew I had to face another day Lord, it made me feel so tired Before the day I met you Yes, I just said that. We've spoken before. I know that. Hey, what's going on down there in that radio show of yours? Well, your sidekick's running the show, dog. You got a fashion designer doing the sports. <laughs> You've gone homo, I man, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, you're gonna have to bring some lesbians in there just to jack up the testosterone level in the studio. Your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. Our old friend Joseph Abood. Whose hair looks hideous today. Well, let's talk about sports then. If we uh, only have about 40 seconds. Okay, well, great news. Uh, pitchers and catchers. Well, pitchers and catchers report today. Major League Baseball. Yeah, certainly should interest you. Uh, <laughs> catchers. They were already here. All right, don't wait for this year's uh, tax breaks. You can invest right now in an IRA. One of the best deals Uncle Sam has ever given us. For... I don't know. Well, I mean, it's just insane, isn't it? He walked through Hall and uh, back then he looked like Reginald Denny looked during the L.A. riots. <laughs> With his high waters and his buck teeth strutting through uh, Harlem. Well, and wasn't it Charlie Wrangler who actually called him as opposed to the other way around? That's the story. Absolutely. That I... Yeah. And then rather than, well, he may have been confused about who placed the call to whom. God. Yo, yo, what's up? I mean, that's just, that's just beyond and crazy, isn't it? People used to ask me what I'm doing here, and I just said, I like it here. And they said, oh, that's yeah. nice, and I kept going. <laughs> yeah, sure. Jesus, God. <laughs> I'm us in the morning, 2020 sports with Warner Wolf. Welcome, Warner. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, Good to have you. Okay. Very kind of you to stop by. Uh, A pleasure. Yeah. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming by. Hi. That'll be fine, David. Uh, good morning, Warner. Good morning, I man. NBA last night in overtime. Lakers beat the Nets 113 to 110, despite 50 by Stephon Marbury. Kobe at 38, and the Shaq at 32. He was 12 for 24 at the foul line. In Denver, the Knicks lost to the Nuggets 96 to 77. The Knicks' big three of Sprewell, Houston, and Rice. Shot only 12 out of 42 from the field. What? 12 out of 42. Good Lord. They yeah. missed 30 out of 42. Hmm. In fact, the Knicks' most accurate shot occurred just before the game when WFAN's John Andres and Mike Breen occurred after Andres was accidentally hit in the head by a ball during the warm-ups. <laughs> the winning team in the West, starting with the Lakers. Is... John Andre just got hit in the head with a basketball, knocking his headphones off of his head. Are you okay? What's my name? How many fingers do I have up? <laughs> Holy smokes. You took a direct shot. I must have a hard head. Well, you have a big one because it obviously it was a good target. Mike Breen and John Andres. <laughs> NBA Commissioner David Stern has told the fledgling Vancouver Grizzlies, who say they lost $40 million this year, to go look elsewhere for another city. Among those cities being considered, St. Louis, New Orleans, Anaheim, and Reader's Digest, New Mexico. <laughs> Whom do you trust, I man? Whom do you trust? Apparently not the White Sox. What? The White Sox. Do not trust the White Sox. Left-hander Mike Sorotka, who was traded to the Jays for David Wells, now says the Sox knew that he had a bad pitching arm before the trade to Toronto. Uh-oh. Sorotka, who injured his arm in game two of the playoffs, says the Sox gave him a cortisone shot last month, told him not to throw for 10 days, and called the team in a few weeks, but instead traded him before he got the chance. The Blue Jays want compensation. The Sox say no. Where is Bud Selig when you need him? 
All right, I'm in. You be the judge. Right. It's time for you be the judge. All right. You're the uh, judge, I'm in. I think you, you've established that. You we don't have a lot of time to do this, Warner. Braves right, on. Braves right-hander Kevin Millwood. Yeah. 10 and 13 last year. Right. 4.66 ERA. Right. He earned 420000 Right. Millwood asked for $3.9 million. Oh, please. The Braves offered $3.1 million. And the answer is... Well, I mean, I wouldn't. I'd, I wouldn't have offered him three point. I wouldn't offered him three point one million. Say, that must have been what he got. That's it. Three point yeah. one million. Wow. Wow. The I man hits again. How can he go ten and thirteen and have a four six six ERA <laughs> and get anything? <laughs> I don't get out it. of the league. <laughs> get him out. Sunday, Monday, happy days. everyone so happy about? Take five from the New York Lottery, of course, because now there's a take five drawing every day of the week. That's right, seven days a week. That means playing take five has never been easier, so you've got more chances than ever to win. Just match five, four, three, or even two numbers, and you could be a winner. That's something that should make every day a happy day. Take five drawings, now seven days a week. See your lottery retailer for details. For New York Lottery winning results, call 976-2020 in the 212-718-516 and 914 area codes. All calls are 40 cents a minute. 976-2020, the official lottery number. It's your online business, www.owenscorning.com for more information. With reports every 20 minutes, Rich Ackerman, WFAN 2020 Sports. Listen to Imus in the Morning tomorrow between 5.30 and 10 a.m. as we give you a chance to be part of the Imus Survivor 2 contest. Our caller who picks the next contestant to be voted off Survivor 2 becomes one of 15 finalists for a trip for two to Australia. Have some fun and get in on the winning with Imus in the Morning and Survivor 2 here on The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. At 421, let's check the fan highway patrol. Here's Jim. So, Mad Dog Russell's in this morning doing sports and, uh, you know, a great enthusiasm, and he's great, and he does the afternoon show with Mike Francesa, Mike and the Mad Dog, which is a, it's the best talk show in America. Well, thank you, Don. The best sports talk Appreciate show. Appreciate that. Sometimes you're mad. You didn't like the fact we didn't introduce Steve Lapis the other day. The well, you don't know who you're talking to sometimes, but uh, when you both are on, here's the thing that I have noticed. I used to try to drive a wedge between the two of you. But you guys are much better together than you are either one of you individually. Oh, they're very nice. I appreciate that. Yeah. You all, you've always have tried to separate the two of us and cause right. problems and get no. one man at the other and see if you can no. split the show up. You've you've gotten off that now. Yeah, because you when you're on by yourself, you freak out and we have these long diatribes about nothing right. and then uh, these long pauses. He and loves this Saturday morning <laughs> show. It's, it's you know, you know, listen to that <laughs> and, uh, That's why I'm here, because he's been on that Saturday morning show. And you can't, uh, and Francis says uh, half the time he's got a donut in his mouth, so you don't know what the hell he's can't saying. Can't understand so, it. Can't understand <laughs> him. So you guys, but you guys are great together. Well, so, thank you, Don. So, Mad Dog, how old's your kid now, the oldest one? He's two. Okay. 25 months old. Okay. And so, Don is trying to tell me that he's got this as you know, Chuck, that Wyatt, this child of his, which is a great little kid. Yeah, I've a lovely a, child. I've had, a, no I've question. had the pleasure of uh, hanging out with him a little bit. Yep. But he makes it sound like that this kid is, A, you know, doesn't watch television. It, so he's he's no, no, smaller than no, anybody no, else. No, 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 I didn't say that. He, he never has, gets yeah. sick. All I'm saying is. He never gets sick. He doesn't. He, he's never had an earache. You'll keep him in an incubator no, all don't. day. He's not going to get no, no, sick, no. Don. He boy goes to school. Boy, 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 in, boy in the bubble. He goes to school exactly. five days a week. He's around all kinds of other uh, kids. I got nine million cousins. I keep, I mean, they're all sick. Situation. You know why they're sick? Dairy products. Why are you this? Dairy products. This dairy okay, products. Okay, well, all right, fine. And you consider yourself Mr. Health? Um, yes, and I've not, not, never had an area. You yourself, if you're, if, you're, if you're preaching this, you know, no dairy products right, and I, be healthy and all right. that, how could you have been sickly your whole life? Well, I'm, I don't feel well. But I, you're I, never but feeling I, well. But that has nothing to do with it. And now, why now he makes it sign that why it is... Tomorrow we're going to have a woman on, yeah, yeah, yeah. this Dr. Jane Plant. She'll be on tomorrow. Well, what's the matter? The last woman you had on was Doris Kearns Goodwin. Okay, this woman. Who tried to tell me oh, that, that the Giants leave, leave are leave Doris games. out of this. Well, that was awful. Well, she was wrong. Okay, uh, Dr. Jane Plant, your life in your hands. This woman found a direct link, a direct link. And what the what? Dairy products are breast cancer. Oh, Prostate oh, cancer. Well, okay. All right. Which is the ultimate irony. Fine. That Stop. breast cancer and your kid is, from mother's What milk. does your kid do at 7 o'clock if you turn the TV off? He freaks, gets mad. He freaks out. He wants the Teletubbies. He wants the Barney. No. He wants uh, 
Blue Cruise, and if you turn that television off, the video finishes up. He runs to you and he points to the TV the and he gets upset. That's normal. He's a no, little no, no, kid. No, no, What's no, no, the big no, no, deal? No, no. We just we, we just made. We don't think why it's any anything at all. We just made the decision. He has never. He has no idea who Barney is. He has no idea who the Teletubbies are. He he doesn't know who. who we were to Four Seasons in Washington. They put uh, they put Mickey Mouse sheets on his bed. It scared the hell out of and him here, because he didn't know who it was. Though, he's some getting rat on my in bed kid. With him. And why is that the Four Seasons? The why it goes to the things and he's gonna go crazy when it gets older. I mean, he's at a Four Seasons. Well, he's a two-year-old. Well, where is he supposed to stay? Not in a Four Seasons. Well, put where? him in a dump. Put him in a Days Inn. Put him in a well, Holiday Inn. Put him in those kind of places. I'm not gonna stay. You're in a spoiling days in. you. You're spoiling your child. We're gonna do it. Anything of the sort, he understands what the deal is. Yes, but what is he no. reading? Uh, Richard Ben Kramer's book on Dimaggio, for goodness sakes? I mean, what's going on here? All right, here's Mad Dog with sports. All right, there, baby, you gotta love it. <laughs> I'm us in the morning, 2020 sports. Right. Okay. Good morning, Mad Dog. Good morning, Don. Uh, NBA last night, the Knicks, they've stumbled out of the post All Star game gate. Have a day in Salt Lake Wednesday. Carl Malone made a living out of the free throw line. What else is new? Scored 33. Jazz over Jeff Van Gundy's crew, 106 to 90. We're obviously not coming hard right now. And, uh, you know, when you give up 106 points, it's not one person. It's a team responsibility. It's, a co it's coaches. It's okay. coaching. He's right, a loser. Uh, Jeff, when he loses yeah, a game, you can't talk to him. He's a loser. You can't. It's a long season, Jeff. It's not a big deal. You lost a game in a regular season. We're all live. June's a long way away. <laughs> <laughs> Mellow out, please. Imagine Jeff and I playing last night with his team, running around all upset, looking at the the, the facts figures and what the rebounding quotient, second second chance shots, offensive rebounds. He drive you to drink. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Knicks have not won in Utah since '92. Now in third place. In '90 the, since '92. That's a long time. I only wow. played one game a year though. though. Oh, okay. It's not like they play three games a year. Well, and how about in Philly last night? You hear this, Chuck? Yes. Sixers scored 57 <laughs> points second half, got 40 from Allen Iverson, crashed the Lakers 112 to 97, Kobe 18, Shaq 29. Lakers just not playing good defense. That's all there is to it. Sixers, Sixers now at 38 and 14. <laughs> uh, and the phony to my right, last year he's loved Phil Jackson, beginning of the year, and told me about how they're going to win a championship. Turned out to be right. And now he's on the Philly bandwagon when he had never heard of the core state union uh, st center. He wouldn't know Allen Iverson or Georgetown if he sat on Don. And now he loves him for, no, for, for, for goodness well, gracious. I'm, I'm, Come I'm on, just, Don. I, I still like the Lakers. Well, who'd you root for last night? He's hedging his bets. I didn't even know they played no, last night. <laughs> How did you not know that game was on? TNT, I, Lakers and Sixers at 8 o'clock. Because we're going through a period now with Wyatt where, where now... We have to read the long version of Black Beauty. Oh, come on. Every that. night. This is God, ridiculous. I'm sick of hearing about Squire Gordon, a kid breaking his neck, <laughs> and Ginger and the other horses. God, I'm God, sick of them. God's not telling you the truth, Chuck. He was watching Ottawa and the Devils last night. Didn't even get a chance to watch it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then uh, I had to write a little essay with uh, for uh, for a school application with a little dope. So You know, getting these little kids, you're right about that. Getting these kids into these little preschool programs, it's almost like you got to donate 50 grand to do it. It's absolutely absurd. Wow. I had the same trouble. Now, you're Dynamis. Doesn't help. So it's, doesn't that mean doesn't help. Doesn't mean anything. I don't even, in fact, we don't even, no, we, we don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't even, I, well, I don't do that anyway. I don't go around and tell people. But I mean, no. You didn't make a call in the middle of the night if you don't get my little wide in no. this preschool absolutely program. Not. I'm going to have Chuck kill you in the no, morning. No, it wouldn't have made any difference. What made any difference? What made any difference? These schools this school do not care. No. They don't care, and I don't blame them. They shouldn't care. Did you get Wyatt into the school that you wanted to get him into? Not yet. You had to write an essay. Well, yeah. What do you mean an essay? Well, yeah, you know, why you picked a school. Why, right. You have to describe your child. You have no idea. You got nannies left and right 24 hours a day. You don't. Yeah, I'm surprised you know Wyatt's last name, for God's sake. That sakes. is absolutely not true. Oh, you have, a, you, have, you have a change of diaper, Don? I'm all of the time. Ah! All of the time. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Help me, Chuck. Help me. Yes. Half yes. of the time. Oh, yes. he has never changed the diaper. No, I've life. changed hundreds yeah. of them. I give his him own. his bath every night. Yeah. No, you don't. I, have, I fix him his... I, here's what I did. I fixed... His mother was working. I fixed him his dinner last night, and then... Oh, no, then I was working, his mother gave him his bath. And then I finished up the bath. You never... I saw you for two days there in Santa Fe when you had me out to the place, the ranch. I didn't see a change of diaper in 24 hours. Well, that, that's absolutely not true. I oh, come on, and I'm playing on a ride home. You didn't change that diaper. Come hell, I would. Well, what well, 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 tell me what, what Grace does. But I mean at well, night. That's what I mean. Well, she's not there at night. You know, oh, come on. I man. absolutely do. 
Yeah. So you're Mr. So you're Mr. Dad. Oh well, absolutely. I, about half the time I fix his dinner, and half the time I give him his bath. Now, what's the story about this essay for the school? Well, well you know, you just have to. You know, just, it's, it's a little a introductory story. thing. It's a little introductory thing. It's fine, but you know, you have to write it. Do you think this will work now to get wide into no, the not, school? No, no, no. I'm not trying to get it to work. It just just answering their questions. Is this for this spring or next fall? Next fall. As is for me. Yeah. I would did the same thing. Yeah. I'd have to write an essay, but I had to do a little work to get him in there. I gave him that. Well, well, your kids, oh, are, your kids are dope five, sitting around and watching uh, 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 Sesame Street and tell it to me. Uh, but I want him to be social when he grows up, Doc. Oh, well, why the social? When my, why, kid, why, why, when my why? kid's 20, he's going to be able to go somewhere, and if it's not a four seasons, he's not going to have a conniption at the front well, desk no, downstairs. Why, why it's fine with all that. <laughs> Where is my Perrier water? He's not going to go nuts. <laughs> he's, he's growing up helping little, other little children with cancer. I mean, he understands. He, he's a very giving, loving little child, and he, and he, and we may even He's two and a half. We still we make him work. He picked up after himself. So he, no, he, he he's not going to be somebody of sixteen. I'm not going to buy him a car. No, no, no. He's 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 very unspoiled. His mother's even worse about that than I am. Nothing wrong with the Teletubbies and the Barney Don. They'll That's, make a big. They're deal. poisoning their uh, child's uh, mind. Uh, college basketball. They got plenty of time to watch that crap. College basketball last night. You can't sit them in front of a television because you're uh, too stop, lazy stop. to spend time with them. That's all the you do is watch TV. What are you reason, talking about? Here's the reason your kid. I'm lazy with my kids. Yes, what are the, you? Nuts. Here's the reason your kid is what in front of a television because you you're kidding? watching the Sixers and the Lakers. Oh, well, that's You don't have it. time for your little child. Oh, that's uh, my wife. You're, you little... are an awful father. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are you're blowing off your kid for Allen Iverson, the thug, and a bunch of these egomaniacs that... from the Lakers. When well, my... your little child, poor little thing, whimpering there, when... having to watch that fat, when stupid, my son pink, gets pink married, dinosaur, that... whatever When my son gets married, I won't have to walk with a cane and a walker. <laughs> oh, well, I can't help that. I mean, that's the way it worked out, you You're going to be 83 years old. This is communion. <laughs> Mad Dog Russo here now. That's the way it worked out. All right. Don't wait for this year's uh, promised tax breaks. You can invest right now in an IRA. One of the best deals Uncle Sam has ever given us people for retirement. Buyandhold.com now. I'm outrageous. And even Barnacle pointed this out. That you have a fat, lion, low-rent, Dirt bag, trailer part, pigeon gut sucking, lion thief. Former president up there lying through his teeth, making it up as he's as he's going along. Oh, free association for Graham about Graham. about why he decided to move to Harlem. And you and you folks are you people are buying it? I mean you, but you know what I'm saying. I feel they, you. People are buying that. I mean it's out. It's crazy. It's it's beyond my ability. I can't even. I don't. I don't even understand it. Well, it's difficult, I mean. I mean, these are the, the Clintons are people who they have zero friends because they they use people till they use them up, baby. They use them till they use them up. Throw and them then they, they, you can you can t- talk from everybody from sure. Well, you can't talk to Vince Foster, no. But you can talk from everybody from him to Lanny Grenier to everybody. On, they, I mean, to Web Hubble to everybody. They Web Hubble them. That's and they, exactly they, they, what one, they do. you know when when you ain't when you ain't happening, you are over. Yeah. When Rita leaves, Rita's gone. They, that's exactly right. Uh, these are awful human beings. Awful. Bill Clinton and that fat wife of his. They are awful people. Well, how could you not think that they're not awful? They are awful people. And you see people like people who you could, who you ordinarily should respect. People like, well, Rob Reiner, for example, or some of these other people. It's disgraceful. Or Jeffrey Katzenberg, or some people who, who are pretty good people. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not horrible human beings. But they get sucked into this. Star power. And it, 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 it's disgraceful. Or, or, or you see uh, Clinton toadies like Charles Rangel and a poor old uh, Vernon George is shuffling around yeah. uh, Uncle Tom and everybody sure. to death. is disgraceful. I mean, uh, it's disgraceful. Yeah, it's sucked, with, with no dignity. Sucked into the Clinton orbit. It's, it, uh, it's, it's uh, Using black people as photo op Negroes. Man. I mean, that's all, uh, that's all it is. Photo op Negroes. And you people just, and just lapping it up? Oh, please. I mean, he was and we got And we got, a bunch of, we got a bunch of lily white racist white liberals, <laughs> by the way, doing the same exact thing. White, white liberals living in buildings in New York City that won't allow Jews or blacks. I mean, who, who do you think you're kidding? I mean, it's outrageous. Oh, God almighty. You be do uh... that. Wake up. Really? I mean... Come on, yo. Keep it real. With your peeps. Bernie in the hood tomorrow. We're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Here, once again, Mike Lubica. You yeah. know, last night I was talking to O'Brien. Yeah. 
then Bruce Willis walked by. Right. I'm still standing there at Shea waiting for O'Brien to come back. <laughs> so he better deal Jenna Harvey, didn't he? No, that's why the connection was bad. I'm just, I'm right here by the press box at Shea Stadium. If you all radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Did he run over to Bruce Willis? No, we or? Were, we, I, I think I, I was in a mid-sentence, like Nancy, you know, and I was, was going to say Odell. Yeah. But, and it was just, oh, oh, oh. And, and, I, and I look like, an, you know, one of those old ads for send this kid to camp after that. Well, one thing we do know, O'Brien and Bruce Willis probably had some hair issues. To do. <laughs> Imus in the morning. If you miss Primetime Thursday tonight, you'll miss out. From ABC News, Primetime Thursday. Until they are. Walking bird dog. Just a walking bird dog. If you don't know how to do it, show you how to walk bird dog. Come on now. Come on. Come on. I miss in the morning. Well, and with Mad Dog Chris Russo, uh, and I know she's starting to wind down here. Wind down? I just get myself well, started. Are you well, kidding me? See, wind down? I'm not like the air you. coming out. Just like air coming out. I just get it. So I got tennis. I got a soul play around. Come on, Joe. I got a lot of juice left. What are you talking about? Fired up at 6 o'clock this morning. Give us something here. Come on, give us some. Come on. This is talk radio. Got his 15-minute miles on his treadmill. I'm an athlete. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, Prince, that's a carry every afternoon. He doesn't. Listen to this. Let's go. Come on. Come on. That's my show. Push yourself with my Francesca. This is oh, your boy. chance. All right. <laughs> I'll say something funny, Don. Well, uh, come on here. All right, here we go. You ready? <laughs> Sports that, report. The yeah. 76ers are flying it. Last night, Lakers made their annual vision and were run out of Philly. 112 to 97. Allen Iverson scored 40. I was always about winning. It just, I was so young and I went about doing it the wrong way. I always felt like I could do it myself off of my God given abilities and, you know, never really utilize um, my teammates. Alan sounds um, like he's found religion The way here. I am now. And right let, now, who can argue? Let me wait till he gets done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I had the wrong out cue. Take it easy. Good job out of you. It's like he stepped over me all day long. <laughs> Kobe, hey, what are you doing here? Kobe not into it. Only had 18 last night. I know you're into this Kobe Shaq relationship all of a sudden. Schmuck. And how Phil Jackson and everything else gets Who's the man out. in L.A.? Who yeah. is the man? Sure, you know, it's Kobe's fault. I mean, Shaq, I mean, last year they ran the offense through Shaq. Kobe won his championship, and now Kobe wants to expand his game. He wants to win a scoring title. He wants to win an MVP. What's about team, not about Kobe, and Kobe's got to get over that. Matt Geiger, you hear about that? Two-game suspension. Steroid <laughs> use. What do they do? All over that. Steroids. He's a sixer backup center. He got, he's using steroids. The NBA caught him. He got suspended two games. Carl Malone had 33 yeah. last night. Knicks got bombed in Utah, 106-90. to 90. How about Duke? Uh, <laughs> uh, Duke, Don, college basketball. Duke lost their first road ACC game wow. in two years. They got upended at Virginia, 91-89. Here's Coach K. They played their hearts out, and uh, we knew that that's the type of effort they would give us. And well, Virginia we weren't good enough. We're generally running a 3 2 defense, and I think it's just very important. Uh, no, it's it uh, <laughs> they, They're picking them up very early at the top of the key there and uh, too many th- going oh to the hole. And, uh, too many threes for Duke, yeah. not enough depth. Be right. careful. Hey, All right. No one on one, nobody guarding anybody. People yeah. stand around, watch them shoot right. baskets. Uh, how about Maryland? <laughs> Blew a big game to Duke about a month ago. Haven't responded since Florida State beat them last night at the Cole Fieldhouse. Hey, uh. John Rocker. Lost a salary arbitration, Don. You hear about that? No. He wanted $3 million. He got one nine. So Rocker upset. Braves used the whole thing with the Sports Illustrated against him in the arbitration case. He was mad at the Braves for doing that. What does John Rocker think, for God's sakes? Mm. It's a battle over a million dollars. you got to go bring up the fact that he's a madman. It cost him a million. Rocker's upset at the Braves. He's a loser. Cal Ripken. Redneck loudmouth. Cal Ripken. Broken rib cage. Get out. He misses Eat spring it. training, promises to be ready opening day. Ripken is Don age, 72. It's <laughs> over. Get out. You know about this Blue Jay White Sox situation, do no, you not? No, no, I don't. What's they made that? It, they made a trade on January 15th. <laughs> oh, I heard about this. David Wells right. to the White Sox the to Mike sick. Soraka. Now, Soraka had a shoulder right, problem. Legs broken. The problem is, when he got to the Toronto Blue Jays, he passed the physical. They gave him an MRI. They found nothing with the shoulder. Subsequently, well. they find out he's got a torn rotator cuff. And One? Oh. Torn rotator Rotator God. cup, you can't pitch. Cup. And the Blue Jays want some compensation for the White Sox. Hold on, you gave Punk me a guy that. who's got damaged hey. goods. And, the, and my problem is, hey, Toronto, 
You dope scored ass, you moron. You made this trade to get Soraka in there. You got to make sure he's okay before you get him. He was hurt all the last year. He had a bad shoulder. And so now Ash is going to go to Bud Selig, the commissioner, to arbitrate this, and hopefully he gets another pitcher back as he loses his pitcher. Not going to happen. But Drug test him. Not going to happen. I happen to agree. One last one. Patrick yeah, Ewing. That's it? You hear about Patrick Ewing? <laughs> no. What about Patrick Ewing? Yeah, Patrick right. Ewing, no who's cares. having a big year. Nine points, five rebounds Jack a game is. for Seattle. <laughs> Wants to go into broadcasting when he's through with his playing career. Yeah. He can't put a sentence together. This is a guy that, that wouldn't give you the time of day for 20 years. Yeah, he's a Scored 60, 20 rebounds. Pat Howell's the game. I'm not talking to the media. Now he wants to be an MSG and get rid of Clyde. No. He wants Clyde out of there. We love Clyde. How can you get rid of Clyde? He wants Patrick Clyde. You know, MSG owns the Nets. Maybe get involved in what? there. Have to go back to work oh, for Dave Checkers. Blah, blah, blah. What are you doing? Story. No. What is he, he told the Tacoma News that this week, I'm going to be a broadcast when I'm doing my career in a year or so. What? MSG, here I come. That's what he said. Oh, well, that's, a that's, 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 that's a joke. That's an absolute disgrace. Matt Dark Russo here in the Irish Morning Program. I'm missing the morning. All right, let me talk to you now about Omni Fitness. Remember that New Year's resolution? Are you going to get that fat ass of yours in shape? Or what happened? You didn't well, do it, did you? No, no I didn't. No. Still a fat load. Well, the Kornheiser. Still running, but how long is that going to last? You put all the weight back on. Outrageous. Uh, you need to go to someplace like Omni Fitness where they have people there. Uh, they're almost like a super runner shop, except the super runner shop is for people. They sell running shoes and stuff like that. And Omni Fitness sells fitness equipment. But they have people there who know what the hell they're talking about. They're very helpful, nice folks. I bought some Stairmaster stuff from them. And, uh, I, well, it's a good outfit. They have about 15 stores. They're having a big sale, a couple hundred bucks off on stuff. So, uh you get a 12 months no pay, no interest deal. Omni Fitness, call them at 1 875 Omni. Or you can call my office and we'll tell you what one of them is. We'll give you the phone number anyway. After last year's market mess, why, well, um, who wants to invest in stock in the stock market? Well, I mean, there's still some good news. Viacom, that's great news yesterday. Stunned the market. The folks at buyandhold.com believe that <laughs> one year doesn't tell the long term story, however. Past performances do not guarantee future results, but over the last 30 years, stocks have returned, well, on average, at more than uh, 10% a year. At buyandhold.com, the online brokerage for long-term investors, you'll find everything you need to invest in stocks for your long-term goals. Open an account, link it to your bank account, and begin investing immediately. You can even set up an automatic investing plan all online. It won't cost you a fortune. There's no minimum balance required, and you can reinvest your dividends for free, plus buy and hold trading costs are among the lowest anywhere. Only a buck ninety-nine per trade when you set up automatic uh, monthly stock purchases through EasyVest. Uh, $9.99 a month for unlimited trades. They even have uh, IRA accounts, including Roth, Rollover, and Education IRAs. And if you're not sure how to get started, go to buyandhold.com for insights on Investing for all of your financial goals, including your child's education and your retirement. B U I A N D H O L D dot com, member N A S D S I P C. Today's man announces the clearance sale to end all clearance sales. 50 to on the air at 1 o'clock Eastern Time here in New York. And I never leave the radio station until around 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. So I'm here all, essentially for me all day. I get here at 5 in the morning, I leave right. around sometimes later so I listen to them and now I've started here the past uh, few months to run in the afternoon and do my Stairmaster deal trying to rehab myself so I listen to them then yeah. and they are very very good yep. so very entertaining it's a good show right. they do things that uh, of course irritate me but they're very good together so they are very good together the sum is greater than the parts yeah they're both individually they do fine shows mm -hmm. but that the, neither one of their shows alone compares to them together. Yeah. It would be like me trying to do a show without you. That's why I mean, I've had other people in here, and it's a disaster. But that's why they're together. When, so, when, when you have one of your phony migraine headaches every four or five years, when you take <laughs> off a day, it's a nightmare. It is. It's a nightmare. Kind of, you know, because you... You know what I'm saying? Well, you and do. Hey, there, there's even a more of an integral... Uh, Situation. Sure. The guy man's going to start crying. It does sound a little weepy. Of course, I did know that Pete Williams, I've uh, been informed, started as a local anchor in Wyoming before he came to Washington, but 
That doesn't, I mean, that's, that doesn't make any sense. I don't hold that against them. There's a bunch of local anchors in Wyoming who suck. Right. Most of them, probably. Most of them yeah. suck, so. Well, did you see Eminem in court yesterday? Yes. Right. Now, that's disgraceful. Well, when, when is he going to go? What a, little, what a little punk he is. His altar boy act, little phony bitch. Showing up with his little suit and tie on and his glasses? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Well, who's that supposed to fool? I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, it's just... Talk about inconsistency. I mean, if you're going to be a rapper... Be, be a rapper. Yeah. Then you got to show up... With, you got to be styling or whatever the, the phrase some, is. Some gold teeth. Yeah, you got to show up in your in your duds. In your ten times oversized Certainly. shirt. Yeah. And whatnot. Do, do the crib sign, you know, in front of the exactly, judge. Exactly, you know with your I mean? box sure. cutter and... Say, yo, what up, judge? Yeah, I mean, you got to... What's the deal? Yeah, you can't. You can't stand there and look like. I mean, that that's a disgraceful. Like one of the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> that's exactly what he looked like, didn't he? Right, he was always hammering. He's a phony bitch. Phony. Oh, he is over. Man, that is over. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Snoop Dogg in the hat house. The real slim shady, your career is about to blow up. You know you got a whole lot more than you should Cause y'all ain't that good Cause it's understood You were cracking at a homeboy from the hood Even though your blonde hair do inspire Tiger Woods You just a phony with your false acrimony Front like a gangster cause Dre is your crony Feminist homosexuals hate Eminem But chicken chicken, everybody's sick of him Cashing in the animal instinct Just cause Britney and NSYNC Backstreet boys all stink So what do you think? You be around longer than them? Don't blink Being outrageous and offensive ain't enough to suffice It's a roll of the dice Don't believe me? Two words Vanilla ice. Right now the critics are enamored, but don't get used to the glamour. Cause you're gonna wind up just like MC Hammer. You're on an ego trip, you're on an ego trip. But soon your fame is gonna slip right through your fingertips. You achieve notoriety with bold and propriety. Condemn a sobriety, blaming your anxiety on the rest of society. But you just a punk of the garden variety. Yo, 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 Drake, give me some more bass. I'm about to rock this place. Meanwhile, you all lady outside, suck your face. You always talk about killing your bride, take her for a ride. But instead of living with you, she better commit suicide. Cause when I had the hoe, it was the only time that bitch you ever satisfied Get real Slim Shady, for real Slim Shady Cause here's the deal Shady, you just aggravate So won't you Slim Shady, just please blow up Please blow up, please blow up Get real Slim Shady, for real Slim Shady Cause here's the deal Shady, you just aggravate So won't you Slim Shady, just please blow up Please blow up, please blow up Give props to the rappers who went first Copying everything they did chapter and verse Acting perverse This is Will Smith cause he prefers not to curse But have no fear he'll still be here when your career's in a hearse So matter matters you ain't no match You know you can't scratch You all ain't nothing but a punk ass bitch Dre is your savior he gives you a waiver Despite the fact you're just another white boy with no flavor Do your best to shock but you lame with a new kids on the block Losing both your AMAs to Dre and Kid Rock And those nominations for all of them Grammys Ain't no compensation for that bit of a Jimmy in your chat you bite my style, but how did you figure that grabbing your crotch would make it get bigger? There will always be something missing from your equation. The wrong persuasion. Can't lay the cut straight, still stay a Caucasian. Snoop Dogg saying move over, Rover. You know what's real, Slim Shady? Your 15 minutes is over. Get real, Slim Shady, for real, Slim Shady. Cause here's the deal, Shady, you just aggravate. So won't you, Slim Shady, just please blow up. Please blow up, please blow up. Get real, Slim Shady, for real, Slim Shady. Cause here's the deal, Shady, you just aggravate. So won't you, Slim Shady, just please blow up. the door, he bites your ass back, boy, Snoop Dogg in the house, keeping it real all up in this mother. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Call your travel agent or Pleasant Hawaii Holiday 800 to Hawaii. I'm Laurie McNichol for the Fan Highway Patrol. Love until they are here in the Irish Morning Program. McEnroe's coming back to the show after a humiliating American at Davis Cup situation, but already scheduled to fill in for McEnroe, Mad Dog Russo, and uh, Deidre Imus. And uh, Deidre Imus is on the phone now. And you have some advice for him, Ed? Well, DJ, you're going to have to get here, obviously, next week, 3.30, quarter to 4. you got to get your cuts organized. you got to read the papers. you got to get your stories set. you got to get five or six stories. you got a lot of work to do next Tuesday. I'm looking forward to it. 
What are you on speed? <laughs> oh, God. Take no. a breath. <laughs> well, if not speed, clearly on acid. No, but Don, don't give your wife a pass. Make her come in here and do a no, she's top not a, quality sports cast. She's not a wussy. I, I, I know she's a great woman, but no, I want no, her in she's, here. She's tough. She's tough. She's tough. She'll do it. She'll she's do it. Athlete. She's tough. Make she those those a, type her stories. What? Make her sure she gets cuts. Types her stories out correctly. Well, she doesn't. She, uh, the, uh, Minko's going to have to help help her type out the stories. What's wrong with that? What Minko? Well, she's never written a radio script before. Nor has Minko. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. Patrick Macaro, man, he's he's got nothing to stand on. I, did, the way he just goes on about Mad Dog is absurd. I know, and he's hey, down he's, on me right now. He's nasty. Hey, uh, did, did he sound like he was angry to you? Yes. I did, too. Absolutely. I felt the same way. Had an edge? Had an edge. Heard an edge? Patrick McEnroe? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's full of, you know, he's, he he has that, uh, his brother syndrome, you know, where it's that pent-up anger, except for Patrick hasn't released it yet, like his brother. And how about him calling me I'm a loud American? I mean, a McEnroe well, should say everybody a loud, a, a, no, no. A loud American. His no. brother, basically, you can't go to any country if you're John McEnroe. You're barred. Talk yep. about being loud, right, yeah. John? Man, what is that all about? Like yeah, that. but Mad Dog, you have to be like you have to face up to things when people say things that you might not like that are true. I am loud. I agree. And you, you know, you know that. No, That's part of your thing. I know I'm loud. I know, but when I go to Europe, I mean, I can be mellow and I can blend in. I well, come in here next week. <laughs> I don't hey, honey, it. I do not I believe can. that. No, no, we'll can. see. We'll see. <laughs> what kind of? We'll see how you feel around ten o'clock Tuesday morning. Well. <clears throat> <laughs> now, I went to bed at three thirty this morning. Well, you're going to be getting up at three thirty next Tuesday. That's right. So, well, we'll see. <laughs> well, we'll see what. I I could I could do it. Well, okay. Well, we'll see. Well, five casts. Well, I don't I don't doubt that you can do it. I mean, it's not you know type a little cast up and get out. You got five solid casts. I know, but the difference is I'm not, I'm not all jacked up on speed, so there, there's not going to be some huge difference between the six o'clock hour and the nine and ten o'clock <laughs> hour. Legion, let me say, by seven well, forty, you're going to want a little speed because the drug is wearing off. By seven forty, you'll be taking a nap in the office. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm missing a morning. In your shorts, 2020 sports. All right, thanks, honey. Here's Mad Dog Ruth. Good morning, Mad Dog. Good morning, Don. Hey, maybe the 76ers will win the NBA championship. A league best record of 38 and 14 after last night's 112 97 win over the Lakers. Allen Iverson scored 40. Kobe Bryant impressed the way Philly head coach Larry Brown sets him up. Larry Brown uh, is a very excellent coach. And he studies the game and he knew exactly uh, how to use Allen to get him open in the frame for shots. Yes, indeed. Iverson going to be the league MVP. Lakers still not playing any kind of defense. You know, I've always liked Larry Brown. I don't know the guy. Oh, but... good guy. Excellent guy yeah. and a good coach. You know, he's done a heck of a job. But a troubled man, I think. A troubled man. He, he, prosper, he can't stay in prosperity. Yeah. You know, after a while, he, he runs out of gas with a certain team. Yeah. Him and Iverson have had a very love-hate relationship. Right yeah. now, they're on a high note. You saw Iverson and like you and uh, my friend Sosa. Basically, but yeah. we've been together 13 years. Him and yeah. Iverson haven't been together 13 years right. yet. No. Let's wait and see. No. All right, two late games in the NBA last night. You and night. Uh, Francesca have been together 13 years? Well, wow. nine, no, uh, 12. No, I, we're working on our 12th year. Well, 89 we started. So it's really? Yeah, 89. Imagine that. It's a long time. Well, Doesn't Mikey. seem possible. Oh. So that means that we've been here longer. Don, you've been here since the 40s. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, I've been on the you same... You and Harry Harrison. You know, I've been on the same frequency, 660 on the AM dial, unfortunately. 660 on the AM dial in New York for 30 years. 1971, right? Yeah. And where were you before that? Cleveland. And before that? Sacramento, California. Right. And you were the railroad guy, the, bar, the, the caboose yeah, right. driver in Pasadena, right? Yes. You wouldn't really be driving in caboose. Well, you... Chris, but I, I do understand where you're coming from. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. May I continue? Not being a railroad. Yes, you may. Yeah. I may continue. Thank you. All right, two late games. dog continues. <laughs> two late games last night in the NBA. Knicks 0-2 since the break. They got bombed by the Jazz 106-90. Malone had 33. Sean Marion 38. Phoenix knocked off the T-Wolves 104-96. Hey, what's up with Duke? Two losses to them in the ACC. Calls for an investigation. Last night on the road, no less, 91-89 at Virginia. Here's All-American forward Shane Battier. We know we're going to get the other team's best shot every time. And uh, crowd was primed and really support their team tonight. And uh, there's a lot of emotion out there in the game. All right, first Get Duke. the ball in the hole, kid. Okay, Indeed. kid? Yeah, first Take the ball to the hole and get it in. Yeah. First Duke road loss there, Don, since February of 98 at St. John's on Sunday. Hey, how about this Blue Jay White Sox situation in Major League Baseball? It involves that January 14th trade involving ex Yankee David Wells. The Jays fitted the lefty to the Chai Sox for young lefty Mike Soraka. Yeah. The problem, Don, is that Soraka has a torn labrum in his throwing shoulder. Wow. The two respective gentlemen. Torn labrum. 
in his throwing shoulder, <laughs> like a rotator cuff. Labia, labia, labia. The two respective general... The you guys be quiet, let me finish. All right, go ahead. The two respective general <laughs> managers are Gordash of the Jays and Kenny Williams from the White Sox. Dr. Andrews and Dr. Miniacci uh, clearly agree uh, that the player uh, had this injury uh, previously. Uh, clearly agree that... He good to me in five to ten you blow me up this late in the show well that's what i'm sick of the guy oh come cares. on that's come a good story nothing to say. hey how about ray caruth what did he do you know ray caruth he, he gave somebody else no he gave his first interview last night from jail in north carolina oh, here's what he said about sharika adams i barely knew her i got to know her at lamar's class <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> hey ray what do you mean I got to know her in Lamar's class. So what do you do in Lamar's class? He barely got to know her, for God's sake. He just hit her a couple of times. Cal you know Ripken is 40, broke his ribs, still says he's going to play Major League Baseball. Oh, please, get out. And Patrick Ewing wants to be a broadcaster. He should quit now. He's going to play two more years. But Patrick Ewing wants to work at MSG, MSG, yeah. when he's done. Oh, uh, he's awful. That, this is a guy who wouldn't talk to you come a heck this of a high water. This, this is a guy the biggest attitude, the this biggest pretentious stupid. schmuck. And now he wants to be a broadcaster. Stupid. Right. And he can't even put a sentence together. Hey, what does it matter with Puffy Combs? I mean, is the guy, is he retarded? What is the deal? Yeah, he's a little, he's a little on the slow side. I mean, a guy walking around with his mouth hanging open. I mean, he just, he looks like, I, well, he looks like there's something wrong with him. Well, he's got a metal plate in his head. I he, don't know. He does? No, he looked that way. Man, there's nothing going on there, no, is there? It doesn't look like it. Sort of like this show, Dunn. Well, he's done uh, fairly well. He's done fairly well, though, for himself, hasn't he? Yeah, he, yeah. he's done very well for himself. There's hope for all you idiots out there. What's the matter with this show, by the way? Uh, no, it shows him fine. A stupendous show. Good broadcast today. Yeah, it was. And thank you very much for having me. You were great. I, I mean, uh, I think McEnroe was right about that. You started off with a lot of fire at 6 o'clock. And then sort of the air came out of the balloon, and yeah, by the and time we reached 10, it was uh, pretty a much... A nice job I did. She picked up the same thing you and I did. 